Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Black Lion Key Farming. I will clarify and state straight away, I probably don't have anything to add over really long, hardcore, long-term key farmers who have done it to the death and know every single little nuance. But I do want to talk about it on my channel because it's something I've been doing recently and was totally new to me. Like it was this complete facet of Guild Wars 2 I'd never really experienced. And I'm sure there are many other people out there um, in exactly the same situation. Uh, as many of you know, I've been earning, trying to earn a lot of money recently in the game. This mostly means I run dungeons every day, but obviously there's a daily cap to those and often if I'm seriously no-lifing it, I'm then left wondering what else can I do for cash. This is where the black line key farming comes in or if you don't fancy doing dungeons, maybe you can just do this in the first place. I do have a friend, for the record, who's done basically nothing but key farming, supposedly, since launch um, and he has tons and tons and tons and tons of money. If you enjoy something really quite grindy, but uh, interesting solo gameplay that can, you know, is very lottery-like. You can get massive, massive rewards out of it. Maybe take a look at this. Um, so let's uh, let's take it from the top and talk about exactly what's going on. As you should know, in Guild Wars 2, there are items called Black Lion Chests that drop from mobs. Now, these things, when you open them up, will sometimes give you really expensive stuff like permanent bank access expresses, which sell for, as you can see here, around 550 gold, among many other very expensive items. They also get you access to many of the Black Lion skins uh, currently for sale from the Black Lion vendors, say, in Vigil Keep right now. But to open those chests, you need keys. The devs really want you to purchase those keys through their gem store, which can be very costly either in terms of real-world money or in terms of gold that you're transferring into gems. I believe the, the keys are in the special tab here, as you can see here. Black Lion chest keys, 450 gems. That's a lot of gold if you're spending just gold on it. However, you can farm a key, roughly one key, in about... 10 to 20 minutes, okay? I've heard 10 minutes is like the shortest that some people have ever done it. I've never actually seen evidence of it, but you know, that's that's an amazing run. 20 minutes is a pretty average run, probably what you'll be seeing in this video, if not longer, because I'll be describing stuff as I go along. Basically, when I farm these out, I put on an episode of The Simpsons or any other uh, TV show that would last you about 20 minutes, and literally, it turns on, and as the credits begin to roll, I get my key. Um, I did go through a phase for a while where I was farming five keys every Every single day and that was pretty fun you know the idea that you could open five chests every day eventually you'd get something good however uh, I gotta say the grind did take its toll on me a couple of weeks back and I have slowed down a bit with it anyway uh, let's start and talk about how you can actually farm keys the way you do this is by rushing personal story um, you guys might remember after you complete your first 10 levels of personal story so for me um, about here I believe uh, you would get a black line key. Everyone does it in all the personal stories. So what you do is you find the very shortest one in the entire game and this happens to be human commoner and you rush through that as fast as you can on the fastest character that you can. You can do this with a friend and it speeds stuff up and I guess I'll start to describe that from here on. So first thing you want to do is go to character select and make a new tomb. Alright, so here we are on the character select screen, and as I just described, human commoner is the quickest one, so we'll pick human. I have heard that Silvari is an option as well, but um, quite an old one, and I believe a fair amount slower when all things are worked out. Now, you've also got a profession to choose. Um, really, there are two main ones you can play, and surprise, surprise, they're the heavy armor classes. Okay, you've got Warrior, who has more mobility running around to the different steps of the personal story, because he can use Greatsword and he can use Sword Warhorn. Or you have Guardian who is what I'm going to choose, who generally is much better in the combat situations, can cleave much more mobs, and generally do a hell of a lot of damage, even through walls. And this is very important for one of the story steps we're going to do. Because we're rushing through the first 10 levels, when we're not going to get to level 10, those end encounters against enemies can be quite tough, and Guardian makes it rather trivial. Now, I just explained to you guys, you can do it with two people. Well, if you have two people, you can have one person as a warrior, one person as a guardian, and you get the warrior's mobility proccing all of the instants that can zone the guardian instantly through and you get the guardian for the combat scenarios so that's a really nice way to do it if you have a friend who has roughly the same kind of loading screen times as you and you could be really on the ball bang 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 i would actually uh, advise i believe i'm currently on it to go completely into minimal graphics settings on the game just because a lot of this is loading screens and the more you can uh, drop those down the quicker at the end of the day you can farm your keys anyway all of this stuff is completely unnecessary this is a character you're just going to delete very soon one thing with 
with the new update, maybe you might want to pick the one of these of the new skin that you haven't got unlocked. So, for example, I might want to unlock these shoulders here, which I don't believe I have yet for my warrior say. So, there we go. We'll do that. Zoom through all of this, but the other important choice is common, okay? You need to be a commoner. And there is one more branch in the personal story you can choose from, which I'll talk about in just a moment. This bit doesn't matter. That's level 20 personal story. This bit doesn't matter. It's just vague rubbish, sadly, for the Guild Wars 2. And name the character. Most people uh, get themselves like a key farming name. I'm really uncreative, so my key farming name is Key with three E's on the end because that was the only one available. So anyway, head in uh, and you'll get your intro cutscene, which of course you're going to want to skip. Now, I will warn you there's a bug in Guild Wars 2. If you're saying TeamSpeak or something, um, sometimes this skip to end button doesn't come up. And I think it's because if you're holding like left control maybe as you go through or some kind of issue with the way that this cutscene loads, this doesn't appear. If you get that bug, and trust me, I've had that a lot, um, I would just relog your client straight away and um, be done with it. As you can tell here, by the way, my value add over other key farming guides is I'm going to try and be very extensive about what we're doing. All right, so we've logged in. Now, here's one of the most interesting things about key farming to me um, that reminds me a lot of, say, being a pre-searing character in GW1. You can actually set up a bunch of gear for your toon that makes things incredibly easy. There is such a thing as account-bound gear in Guild Wars 2 that is not ascended. Obviously, all the ascended stuff is now account-bound, but that requires level 80. We're only level 1. Turns out, though, if you have the Collector's or Heroic Edition of Guild Wars 2, key farming becomes a real pleasure. That doesn't mean you have to have this version of the game to do key farming. It just speeds things up quite substantially. Otherwise, you have to head to your bank in Divinity's Reach. As it stands, because I have that edition of the game, I'm going to talk to you guys about how this works. So we load in, okay, and we get, number one, a Hall of Monuments Portal Stone, which we really don't need. We don't want to do anything with that. And it takes a while to delete, so I'll just leave it there. But we also get a mail, okay? The mail includes a Hero's Band, which buffs our stats and trust me that does count for stuff at this low level and we also get a golem banker who we can double click in this tutorial zone to actually access our bank and take stuff out of it this is really useful because it means you can put account bound gear in your bank and use it instantly at the beginning of your key farm. This will only take seconds when you log in usually obviously I've taken a little bit longer so this is my key farm gear right here okay and um, what I've got myself set up with is a chest piece, some gloves, some leggings, and some boots. I also have various weapons. I've got a war horn here. I've got an axe here for my warrior. I've got a sword here for my warrior. But I've also got a staff for my guardian, and I've got a great sword for my guardian. So all of this gear, okay, don't get confused about it. Basically, just in Guild Wars 2, there is um, account-bound gear if it's low enough level. When you equip it, instead of going soul-bound, it becomes account-bound. And you can buy any of this on the trading post. So, for example, let's say we want the chest piece, right? This is just a mighty chainmail chest piece, right? So if I go over to the filters, you can go category armor, you can go category coats, and make sure it's very low level, level range 0 to 2. And a bunch of different things come up. Obviously, you want the one of your, your armor class, which I guess for me is on page two. And as you mouse over these, you'll notice something quite important. It doesn't say soul bound on equip. So once you've bought it, you've got it here. You'll see this, this armor piece, once I equipped it, is now just account bound. That means any character I ever make can wear it. So the idea of key farming is I create a new tune. I grab my bot golem banker. I get all of this gear out. I equip it all. As you can see here, you just double click through the stuff. It replaces my really bad gear. And then once I finish the key farm, I open my bank again, deposit it, and try again. Now, this may seem like a lot of effort to go through, and you may be thinking it's rather pointless, but I'll prove to you just how powerful this can be. So, what you can do with this account bound gear further is not only it is higher stats than the default stuff, as you can see here, this is defense 24, this is 29 with plus 5 power base on it, but you can also put runes and sigils in your stuff. So, here I've stacked out all of my things, the shoulders come default. I've stacked out all of my gear with runes here. You can see I've got plus 10 power, plus 10 power, plus 10 power by spreading through pack, whole brack, strength and uh, fire runes. Now these are all minor runes, remember. Um, further on your weapons you can equip bloodlust and bloodlust is crazy powerful and I am about to blow your minds I promise with how strong this is in early level areas of Guild Wars 2. So uh, let's start using our gear, our new gear. I've got a staff equipped in the Chatura zone which isn't what the devs would expect. And look how quickly I'm cleaving these centaurs down. Even better, everyone I kill gives me more bloodlust and as you can see I'm doing even more damage substantially every time. It shows you that in low scaled zones how powerful just a bit of bloodlust stacking is. It's funny because in the tutorial level zones unlike everywhere else in Guild Wars 2 there is no downscaling. There are people out there um 
it's sort of really trivial now because of the level up times, but there are people out there who used to spend a long time trying to level up in these early level zones, um, and they could get to level 70, and they wouldn't be downscaled at all. They, they would just run around absolutely one-shotting the hell out of everything. It's really interesting to see that in Guild Wars 2 because it's such a core part of the game for them to always be scaling things around. It's kind of a, a nice little change. Anyway, normally what you're going to want to do is walk directly to the garrison. I've just come here to grab a little bit of bloodlust. Typically, with the personal story, you guys might be expecting to run into this little house over here, or even talking to Corporal Byrne up at the front. You don't have to do either of those things. You can walk directly to the garrison. Um, there are a couple of centaurs you can kill up on the hill up just over there, but the main goal with your staff at the beginning it's just to unlock this ability here, Symbol of Swiftness, the skill 3. This will give you that little bit of extra mobility. Uh, this is largely where uh, Guardian is a little bit deficient in key farming. If you're a warrior, you obviously go a lot quicker than other players. Um, but that symbol, symbol of Swiftness is going to be really helpful to you. Uh, I do know some people, I was just talking about gear. You know how I said I've got loads of power in my stuff. Some people do opt to go for a little bit of swiftness duration when they do it on their Guardian, just because it can help out that extra little bit. Anyway, so we've headed immediately into the garrison and triggered the defense event, which we now have to complete for ourselves. Uh, this isn't actually too bad. It allows you to get a bit more bloodlust and keep unlocking skills. I'm sort of done with my staff already. If I hadn't done that little bit of extra stuff for you guys, I wouldn't already be done. Um, and so you can come here and take this opportunity to maybe swap to your other weapons, such as my greatsword here, which I now want to unlock some skills on. There is a trick. If a player has already come here and the uh, event is already going on, if that door behind us is closed, for example, when you start your key farming tune, and this is more common since the mega servers have come out, if that happens, you can run around the side of the garrison, as you can see on my mini map here, and just walk up the uh, hill back there to skip the entire thing. That is uh, one of the tricks that you can do in this little area to keep the pace going and go a little bit more speedy. I actually kind of get annoyed when that happens though because it does mean you do miss out on unlocking skills. Uh, and the main thing I want to unlock here on my uh, greatsword at the very least is Leap of Faith. This is the skill 3. Again, just for more mobility, which uh, you really do tend to want. Anyway, so here's the last guy. This is the high stage. We'll just blow him up and look at the damage we're doing. He's already dead. Uh, and I'm going to get flopped like a fish all the way across this bridge here. I love that about the start of this. Um, and we can push forward. Now, I said I was going to blow your mind with the bloodlust thing. I only have six bloodlust. Uh, I could have waited and got 25, but that wouldn't be a very efficient way of doing this farm. Um, usually, you're going to have around the amount that I've got here. An interesting quirk of doing it with more than one person, if you do it with two people, you get the added mobility and the, the combat help, but also here at the start, it scales that defense event up and you get a lot more centaurs running at you, therefore you unlock a lot more skills, and um, in the long run, it can help you a lot. Just because it scales up, you're still one-shotting the head out of every everything. So here, we'll go back on our staff, right? This is the big boss at the end, okay? This is the huge damaging guy. Turns out on Guardian, with just a little bit of bloodlust and these crazy stats, if I use Orb of Light, through the two hands. Um, wow, I completely missed. It tends to do crazy, crazy damage. As you can see, he's melting down. You can sort of one-shot this boss, and I'm very sad that didn't happen there. But there you go, that's the boss dead. And so now you can see why you would want to go on the trading post and buy some of those very low-statted uh, bits of gear, just so that you can very quickly golem bank a click, double-click through all your stuff, you've got it all equipped, and then away you go. You know, It doesn't take very long to equip the stuff, and it speeds you up massively. It's also um, something of a necessity, I'd say, with some of the later story steps we have to do, where, again, we're going to be low-level and we're going to be scaled quite high. So anyway, let's continue with this very slow, inefficient run. We're going to grab any reward we want from there. It doesn't matter. We're going to speak to this guy and quickly press M to get rid of the prompt. And now we're going to start running. Um, ideally, you have your Greatsword 3 unlocked by this point. I don't. I often don't, I must be honest. I'm often... Um not doing it with two people. If you have two people, you absolutely will have it unlocked here. But again, if you have two people, you can sort of sit about and let your warrior do a lot of things. But what, what's the first thing you have to do every time uh, you're playing Guild Wars 2 in the personal story? You have to complete a heart event. So that's going to be our first goal. This is one of the many, many, many reasons why human is so easy and so good for key farming. Because all you have to do is walk along this bridge and you can immediately help this guy out, Farmer Jeb. Uh, Farmer Deer. Where's Farmer Jeb? He's one of the guys around here. Um, we're going to help Farmer Deer um, complete his heart. Now, the quick way to do this is to feed a cow four times. I'm giving you guys a lot of specific information, so <laughs> if you can retain it all, then kudos to you. But we're going to feed a cow four times specifically. And again, if you're on Guardian, you can drop your symbol down while you're picking up a bag of feed, say, so it ticks on you more frequently. I believe that's three bags. And once you've got your fourth bag fed to the cow, um, I believe this is the most efficient way to do it anyway, you're going to grab a water bucket 
and just quickly water these plants. Now, if you position yourself correctly, you can. I, me I messed up there because I missed one of the plants. You can basically water all of them at once. And again, I've missed one there too. And then you just come over here and that will be the heart done reasonably quickly. Maybe there's some quicker ways of doing it. There's a bit of RNG here. Sometimes say a worm has spawned in the field, but you kind of want to ignore that. Maybe if the bandits have spawned, you can do a lot of damage to them. Like I sort of feel like while I'm running around here at the moment, like an upscaled 80, especially if you get bloodlust. You see all this damage you're doing? You think when you're an 80 and you've got your ascended gear, it's like, oh, look all the damage I'm doing in these low level zones. Turns out a level two can do it too. It just needs a little bit of bloodlust and a couple of rootins. Um, anyway, so there you go. You've finished your heart event. Now that they've changed the way this works, you actually don't even have to uh, bother with that heart there. I tend to get rid of it, though, just because it annoys me a little. The next thing to do is read this mail that you get sent that says feeling better, and that'll trigger the next step of your personal story. ArenaNet do something really cool for you. By coming here, we've unlocked this waypoint, which we'll need in just a second, which is really nice and efficient. But also, you automatically unlock your home instance waypoint. I never realized this until I started key farming or until... um. I began Buddy Blitz not too long ago. They actually give you this straight away. And I guess it makes sense because you're supposed to live there. So why wouldn't you have the waypoint unlocked? But they give it to you straight away. And this is really handy. It means you can get immediately, not just into Divinity's Reach, but way deep into your home instance. If you don't have the Collector's or Heroic edition of Guild Wars 2, I believe Heroic gives you that Golem Banker, that's the point you're probably going to want to go to your bank after you've done the Heart Quest. Uh, the reason you do the bank after all of that is because you want to unlock the Fields Waypoint. That's just the most efficient way of doing things. Anyway, so you just auto-run straight into the inn here. Um, and now we're in our first little mission. If you've got two players, you can have one standing back at that door as you trigger this NPC, and they'll immediately just cleave out all the mobs. As it stands, I'm on my own, so I have to drop a symbol of swiftness. Auto attack just once or twice, and everyone should be dead. Uh, and this little instance involves a lot of um, bandit thugs who are threatening the people in this town. There are a lot of tricks you can do in here. I'm not 100% sure how they all work. One of them involves running immediately to the top of the house, and all of the mobs should follow you. I'm not actually doing that in this little guide because I don't know exactly how it works. But if you run just way up there, apparently, yes, everybody will follow you and you can cleave them all down instantly. There's also some other weird tricks where if you stand on a bench for or, or something apparently a bunch of um mobs will actually like one of the bosses will fight his allies for you it's very curious really you want to be on great sword in here i know it'd be tempting to sound stuff but you really do want to get this uh, leap of faith unlocked and i've sort of been messing up by not doing it here you've got big nose ted they added a little cutscene in a very recent patch that annoyed many key farmers because if you walk directly over to him it triggers a small cutscene however on guardian if you use symbol of swiftness and stand behind this here well i don't even think you have to stand behind it he's melee you can line of sight him away from the trigger zone for the cutscene and uh, just burn him down. This is the uh, desk, I believe, that people say you should stand on if you just run to the top of the house straight away. All the mobs should just come up and cleave one another just fine. Um, so here we go. We're going to cleave him down. And as you can see, he's already doubled my level. He's level 4. I'm level 2. Um, and it will get more and more difficult from here on out. Anyway, now that everybody's dead, sometimes when you're doing a key farm, you'll find that uh, one dude is still alive down at the bottom. I made sure, I believe it's this uptown Johnny dude, I made sure that he was dead before I climbed up here. But you have to be aware of that if the end hasn't triggered. You get a bunch of stuff here again. Maybe you're going to want to get the locked skin. So, for example, chainmail gauntlets. I'll grab that. Yay, we're unlocking skins while we're doing it. How efficient is this? And uh, you're done. So, immediately grab your reward and leave. Really, what we, we want to do is go to the field's waypoint. What you saw me do there was finish the personal story step, leave the instance, and then go to the field's waypoint. That was actually not the quickest way you can do things. You can instead, from inside the personal story instance, go immediately to your world map, and then zone through. And I'll demonstrate that with our next little mission. So here we've got Lieutenant Francis. we just got to click through a bunch of dialogue here. Absolutely skipping stuff here. You do not want to care about the lore if you're doing this. It will extend your runs by a long, long, long way. As you can see, by the way, we're already about 20 minutes into this guide. Uh, this would be definitely a completed key already. If, if it hadn't been me rambling on and going slow and showing you guys stuff, could have already ran a key by this point. You'd have a black line chest ready to go. Um, and that's a slowish run. If you have a partner, if you get very good at it, you know, you may have even been able to have run two keys supposedly by this point. So just do consider that timing wise. Anyway, um, again, I'm being really bad. I should definitely have Leap of Faith here. And what you should be doing through these long runs, I'm really hoping I can just kill this stag and get it. Yes, I can. What you should be doing through these long runs is dropping a symbol of swiftness 
and then using leap of faith on your on your greatsword and then swapping back. Yes, you do not have weapon swap available to, as a guardian right now, but you can still have your hero panel open on the equipment screen, uh, positioned off to the right so it's nice and out of the way, and uh, quite simply rotate through them just by double clicking. I actually think this is a really good thing for many people to learn to do. You can actually kill these guys as well if you want to continue unlocking skills. Empower is really the last one you need on Guardian. The Star 5, sorry about that, I accidentally clicked out of my uh, client. Star 5 is sort of useful. Uh, right at the end, but it's not anything essential, I would say. So you're just you're mostly going to want to run past these. What I'm actually doing here, putting myself in combat, probably isn't the best way to do it. Um, so again, here, when we break combat, we'll swap to our greatsword. We use Leap of Faith, make sure obviously we don't hit people with it. Swap back, get ready with our symbol. Um, and basically, this is how you want to be doing it. There's a bunch of easy mobs you can cleave down here. Do take the time to do it. Don't forget, this whole thing is sort of a balance of bloodlust. The more easy little things you pick off and kill... Um, the easier bosses will be at the end of runs. I quite like it actually. I wish there was more of a balance of that in most of Guild Wars 2's gameplay. Anyway, so this is Twitchy Jake. Don't forget that your Leap of Faith actually blinds people. He just knocked me down there. If you engage on him with a Leap of Faith, he probably won't knock you down. When he gets to 50% health, he will go um, green. At this point, you can drop another symbol of swiftness, interact with this, and then he'll go red again, walk onto your symbol, um, and if I'd been a little bit quicker there, he would have um, been melted down in it. So we kill this. A couple of other ads appear also, just as you finish Twitchy Jake off. As you can see, they're getting cleaved down. All hail Staff 1 Guardian. As soon as you hit this cutscene, now you're going to want to zone out. So you hit your, your world map straight away, and then load immediately to the field's waypoint, okay? Or whatever waypoint you're currently going to. For us right now, it's the field's one. Uh, the reason you're doing that is because if you hit the exit instance button, you're hitting two loading screens. And this is what I was talking about at the start of the video. You want to have as few loading screens as possible. And again, we're going to just spam through this dialogue here. And now we get to go back to our inn. Again, what do you know? We have the waypoint. So you can see, in terms of the waypoints and areas you need to explore and go to, this is just so fast. It's just bash, 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 bash. And there's actually a good balance between the actual amount of fighting you have to do while key farming and running around. So I've unlocked all of my um, staff skills here. I'm definitely going to be on Great Sword for a little while. Um, and you're just going to want to keep swapping through. You know, there's a little bit of micromanage, I guess. It all depends how much you're comfortable with, how quickly you really care about running the keys. For me, I got really enthused by this. I really like just the whole idea of it, you know, getting your own gear for it. Gear that you can now skin whatever you like. You know, if I had the legendary greatsword, I could be running around on a, a level 2 with a legendary greatsword all the time. And remember, you're not recreating this gear each time you make a new character. That It's the same gear, it just goes in your bank. So it's really quite fun, you know, I got very enthused by it. I spent a lot of time trying to, you know, max things out. And then I started to get bored. You know, I'm not going to butter this up for you guys. This gets boring. Um, oh, no, we need to go downstairs. I almost messed that up. Uh, <laughs> so once you have done a certain amount, you really go very brain dead. And this is why I was talking about, you know, how we um, watching stuff like The Simpsons just to keep your focus on something else. So anyway, here you go. I, as you can see, I hit my world map already in anticipation of the reward prompt. And you'll see that the UI does come out. It bugs out somewhat. You don't see the shield or whatever at the top. But you can still select your reward from within the map and then immediately zone out to where you want to go. Um, I think we're going to... No, I went to the damn way, way, wrong waypoint there. We're not going to the Vigil Headquarters yet. We're going immediately out to the Shamer Waypoint. You can do that from within your personal story instance. So once we've done that, we're back out in Queensdale. And we're going to be headed to a cave just beyond the graveyard. Maybe some of you remember where that is. There's a little bit of debate on this specific point of the farm as to which waypoint is best to go to. You can either go to the one I went to or you can go to this one here, the Dwayne waypoint, which again is automatically unlocked for you, uh, in Divinity's Reach and then run out of the main gates of the city and then you'll be walking along that wall over there. Uh, walking along that wall I think is slightly quicker um, and you can hop over a bunch of fences when you get to the graveyard. But you do need short loading screen times, and do uh, in my personal opinion, it offsets the speed of that loading screen. Again, uh, this is where warriors shine. These small sections here. If you're on a warrior, you're just like zooming along on your uh, greatsword three, your greatsword five. Maybe even if you've uh, unlocked your sword two ability, which I tend to do. Um, I mean, Warrior, there's a lot of crazy stuff you can do. You can invest in unlocking your axe skills, and then you can invest in unlocking your sword skills. It's funny, because that's not a mechanic in Guild Wars, so, you know, actually caring about unlocking your skills. But in key farming, it is, you know, depending what weapon you've got out at what point can really change how quickly you run stuff. Because unlocking those skills is a game within the game. 
Anyway, so we'll hit the cave. Again, if we had a partner, he didn't have to do that run at all. So I could have just let a warrior do this for me and um, waited as a guardian elsewhere, which is often what you do. You want to kill this guy? I like to kill him with great sword personally. Press F when he dies. I already, I always mess that up. You need to actually press F so that you wear this bandit disguise. Uh, head through this door here. You can skip the cutscene instantly. That's also a great candidate for a symbol of swiftness spot. You can put it under your feet just there at the door. Um, and now you've got three different little things you can do inside this cave. The first one I start on is Dead Eye Della. Uh, you can open the dialogue prompt with her, drop a symbol of swiftness, immediately uh, proc it, and then just auto-attack her down. Uh, she is basically Sure Shot Seamus from um, Cordicus's Manor. So there I use my heal skill specifically just to dodge her attack. She charges it up, but it's got a long tail, and you can just kite in circles around her. What's currently going on with this fight is very, very weird, and I've never really experienced it before. Usually, she's not against those crates, and you can just keep going in little circles around her, and there's no risk you'll die, but if she hits you, she'll CC you with that big attack, and she'll put bleeds on you. It's literally the same as that Cordicus Manor Path 3 boss right at the start. Anyway, once you've killed her, she'll uh, have a little bit of dialogue you can quickly spam through. Then you want to head over here. If you've got two players, again, one person could be doing this while the other players killing Della. You can take the fuses from this box. Again, that prompt you don't have to be scared of running away from. It won't actually do anything. Once you've got the fuses, you want to give them to this dude called Blaze, who uh, you can just say these fuses and click through again. And then you can end with Uptown Johnny, who you only have to speak to and press this once. All of these um, personality system options that don't really matter in Guild Wars 2 anyway, you can just click no. You can just leave straight away and you don't have to go through it. So again, now we want to go back into Divinity's Reach. What am I going to do? I'm not going to click that all the way over in that corner. That would be stupid. We're going to go straight to our world map and we're going to go back up to the Salma Waypoint. Now, instead of going into the Salma District this time, uh, we're going to go into the Seraph headquarters. This is the third and final location we have to go to for key farming. And luckily for us, again, it's really, really damn close. So we're just going to head over um, to this little portal here. I've always liked these portals. Actually, I was disappointed in betas and launch and stuff when I realized that these portals work this way. I always wanted actual stairways inside those towers that would take you up. Anyway, once we get here, there's going to be a little bit more zoning around. So do remember to grab this waypoint just here before you uh, head inside the instance. It's quite important you get the palace waypoint. Uh, if you've got two people, you can start yo-yoing between the Salma district and the vigil headquarters at this point, but it doesn't really matter. So uh, we'll head in here. Trigger a tiny bit of dialogue between these guys. Spam through. And then you get a decision, okay? Whether to help the orphanage or the hospital. We're going to help the orphanage, okay? There is some viability in choosing the hospital. I've just never really done it. I believe it's a bit further away, but it's easier on combat. So maybe it's something you want to do on Warrior. But really don't take my word for that because I've never done it myself. Uh, again, this reward prompt comes up. Don't worry about it. Just go immediately onto map screen. Uh, accept the reward. Show the lower level of um, Divinity's Reach and waypoint immediately back to your home area. If you get this error here where you've got too much loot on you, remember you are getting bags as a reward for completing this. So you just double click the bags as you're going and then you won't be encumbered anymore. Now we're going to head back inside and this is the big final mission really... Um, that's actually difficult in my opinion. There is one more after this, but this is the this is the tough one And this is where Guardian really shines here We have to save the people in the orphanage now the orphanage is right near spawn The hospital would be on the other side, which is why I say it's further away. There's loads of difficult mobs in there We're actually in a level 8 personal story instance right now only at level 4 and it does hurt Especially if you don't have the gear set up. So we're actually gonna play on staff Why was staff such a cool decision because staff allows you to do this number one You can drop a symbol of swiftness on that door to break it instantly and staff cleaves through walls, which is totally broken and ridiculous, but it's cleaves through walls. So we can stand on this crate where no enemies can really hit us and just spam our way on five mobs inside the room. Um, and also the mo the allies with us are inside right now, say Logan Thackeray. We can use Empower on staff to heal those up um, and give them a bunch of might so that they do more damage. Don't forget they're higher level and there are enough of them to make that worth it. Um, and we're just going to keep spamming through here. This will give us bloodlust. You really don't want to die here because the bloodlust is very useful for the final boss. Once you stop seeing numbers coming, stop seeing ticks, you can assume you've killed one of the bosses. And then do the same over here in this little area of the orphanage. These enemies might actually come out to you and these enemies can really hurt. So do be aware. Try and line of sight them if you can. Look at all the damage I just took. Um, but as long as you keep your distance, keep kiting around. 
Yes, I know I've got to pop my heal skill. You should be okay. Then you've got Uptown Johnny. This boss doesn't usually come out. Usually he aggro's on Logan. And again, you can pop in power. Heal yourself up just a tiny bit. I mean, it's really negligible here. And uh, just keep spamming your stuff away on him. It's annoying that he's aggroed on me, but whatever. As you can see, he's almost been melted down. I don't know where he's going. This has been such a weird key farm. Like, you're rarely ever fighting him out here. You're usually inside the orphanage. And now that he's dead, do be aware that two riflemen stand on this staircase. And again, they really hurt. So stand somewhere that you can kill them. You could drop a symbol of swiftness down the stairs to drop them down quicker. Um, and when all is said and done, I believe nine bloodlust is what you should have, as you can see here. And I swapped to my greatsword for this bit. I find greatswords quicker for killing bosses. Usually by now, I would have unlocked my symbol of wrath. Uh, but we'll engage again with the leap just to blind him, stop that knockdown from coming on us. And uh, we'll just start attacking. There is some, um, perhaps, uh, good reason to stay on staff here because you could be empowering Logan again. And there are more tricks here. You're not really supposed to be up where Big Nose Ted is currently stood. But you can, like, jump up there early. There's, lo like, a lot of weird things. Any really experienced key farmers, you can feel free to leave comments if you want about the weird stuff you can do with this because people do this so much they get it down to an art and there's a lot of crazy tricks people know how to dodge like every tell of every animation and stuff anyway so once you've killed all of those mobs um which trust me i've struggled on many times if you start trying this after you watch this video you might struggle in there uh it probably is just a gear thing uh i i, I promise you it's probably just gear once you've done that you don't have to wait for any of the dialogue that's going on over there just immediately head your way over to the other location if you're unfamiliar, this story step was what they talked about all the time in conventions. All the time. It was ridiculous. Oh, I have joined them outside, haven't I? I believe they have. Yeah, yeah. It will trigger a cutscene for you. After the cutscene, head to this guy, Lieutenant Francis. Quickly press F and then walk away. That building's about to blow up. This was like one of their big moral decisions. This was like their child star for their, their poster boy for the personal story. It was, oh, who do you say? The orphanage or the hospital? And, um, of course, we don't actually care about the ethical ramifications of what we're doing. We just want the quickest outcome, and that's it. So, once you've done that, again, you're going to get the option, don't be tempted. Just go immediately to your map, swap to the upper level. This was why we unlocked the palace waypoint. We can port immediately to um, the vigil headquarters and head in for our final little instance and the collection of our key. As you can see, I'm about 15 minutes late. But, hey, I mean, I think I've explained a fair amount as I've gone. This has definitely not been a speed run of a key farm. I'm kind of interested. Do you guys remember when Super Adventure Box 1 came out, I think? I oh, know, Super Adventure Box 2. I actually did a speed run competition. If I had a little bit more gold on me, I might do another one for key farming. See what the quickest absolute key farm there is out there. And see whether it's like a collaborative effort or whether people have got some interesting tricks. Anyway, so quickly speak to Logan. On Guardian, I would have your staff out here. As you hear uh, Countess and Nice, once they trigger their dialogue, say the word cells. I tend, well, and I can't at the moment because I don't have my uh, uh, stuff on, my audio on. But when she says cells, that's generally when you want to sw drop your symbol of swiftness. This will allow it to tick for the max duration, and that will speed the NPCs up. And the NPCs will run quicker with you, as you can see here. Got the timing pretty good there. We're going to go downstairs and have one small fight. Uh, I mean, this step is nothing compared to the one we just did. Uh, we're going to come into this cell. We're going to pretend to be bandits. So we're going to catch the ministry guard doing naughty, naughty things. And what happens in this step is Anise actually summons a bunch of clones. You can drop your wall, by the way. I think I sort of misplaced mine slightly. But you can drop your wall to just knock down all the Ministry Guard and that can keep them balled up a little bit more. But what happens here is Anise actually summons a bunch of clones. Now, Mesmer mechanics in Guild Wars 2, if the Mesmer has a bunch of might when they summon stuff, it makes their, their Phantasm stronger. And so I've heard theories that if you use Empower at the start of this mission, it makes all of these illusory swordsmen stronger too. I really can't confirm that though, so I'm not going to say that you guys have to do it, but you can try it if you want. Uh, and this is again is why, why Guardian shines, you know, even on Warrior you can't cleave this much. You can just stand here, I'm not drawing any aggro from these level 10 mobs, I'm only level 4, they do hurt. You can just stand back here dropping symbols of swiftness and auto attacking the hell out of them. Um, and sh very shortly you'll have them all dead and you're all ready to collect your key. As you can see here, some of them are getting in my face. It's not really that typical. Uh, Logan, being a guardian, actually heals you. The power of the gods heal you, Divine Radiance. There you go. You can collect your loot, skip the cutscene, and well done. You just finished your level 10 personal story step. You get a reward, and what do you know? That's a black line chest key. So we will uh, grab our small reward, and our inventory is going to get full. What do we do from here? We pop our golem bank it immediately. I actually didn't equip my hero's band. There you go. That was something else I forgot to do. We're going to pop our golem bank it instantly and deposit our gear. So we're going to go back into our equipment panel. And this is something you want to be careful about. 
don't delete your gear accidentally. That happens to me quite often, and um, yeah, it's a bit of a pain to not have to only go back um, through the trading post and buy the stuff. Not because it's expensive, but then all the little runes you want as well, the sigils that you want. Uh, let's talk a tiny bit about sigils as well. Bloodlust, I think, is just absolute number one. There are extra slots now, as you can see. I haven't even put in my two-handed weapons. So you do have an extra sigil slot you can use. For those slots, I actually wouldn't suggest like bandit slaying, even though you're killing a lot of bandits. Um, maybe the swiftness sigil is probably one of your best bets that you can go for. Uh, like uh, swiftness on killing enemies, or maybe there's a swiftness duration one. You can maybe go for force if you really like, but we're playing with such low numbers here. Maybe it won't be that relevant. Just go with whatever you find is fun. You've seen how difficult it really is, and it's not that bad. Anyway, so once you have deposited all of your gear, and most importantly, the key that you got, you can go ahead and delete your tune. There are a couple of other things. If you plan on doing this an awful lot, the bags of pinched goods you might want to start saving up, and the um, raw, uh, is it the rawhide leather straps? It's either that or the shattered lockpicks. I don't think it's the shattered lockpicks. I think it's the rawhide leather straps. Um... Oh, no, 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 it's these. It's the shredded garments. These salvage items can actually fetch you a fair price on the trading post, as well as these for your materials and weird miscellaneous goods. So you might want to save these up, because they do build up and build up and build up. And hey, otherwise this is just loot you're going to be deleting anyway. So once that is all safely in your bank, go ahead, delete your character, and um, see what you get from your key. I will quickly edit in a section where we open this key and conclude the video. Alright, so here we go guys, uh, back on list, I've just bought a key, um, a chest, sorry, from the trading post, let's see what we got. We got a Black Lion uh, ticket scrap, we got a Bank Access Express and a Crafting Booster. These scraps you'll actually get fairly frequently, you can even get whole tickets just immediately out of the chest. Um, and in total, I wouldn't say I've done that much key farming, but I've had three Black Lion weapons from doing it already. It's not that bad. Also consider that uh, the Winter's Day weapons and the Sclerite weapons are going to be removed from the game pretty shortly, so if you want to get those without spending crazy amounts of cash, key farming over the next couple of weeks, which I promise you is fun when you first get into it, and if you have people to play with who both, both boost the speed of it and how fun it is, uh, it could be worth your guys' time. Uh, there's one tiny little thing that I do want to touch on as well, and that's the idea of the gear. This is just a cool little thing you can do. I was talking earlier about how you can make your character look as good as you, you want by skinning the four pieces of gear you can buy on the trading post. You cannot buy a helmet and you cannot buy shoulders. These are actually higher level equipment that doesn't exist. You've only got the bottom four. However, if you desperately want a helmet and shoulders, the Guild Wars 2 Heroic Edition will give you a one-time chest that has Black Lion skins on it, like it's profane armor, for example, but it's also crazy low-level armor that is account-bound. So, if you really want a full gear set for key farming, look totally badass, you know, have your key farming tune at level 2 look just as good as your level 80 tune, for example, you can do that. You just need the heroic edition of Guild Wars 2, um, and that is not included as the collector's edition, which is what I bought at launch. So, do bear that in mind, and I believe if you deleted that box once you got it, you also lose it for good. So there are very few players out there in the game who do have that full gear set, but, um, you know, they have a lot of fun with it, I presume, and they get a bit more stats out of it at the same time. So anyway, there you go, guys. Key farming, a long run. I grant you that. However, we've done it in true wooden potato style, and I've explained basically everything I know about it. I'm sure there's lots of little tricks I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments, and hopefully I've inspired some of you to, uh, you know, have a nice little casual farm you can do maybe a couple of times a day. As I say, I was doing five a day, and it was really fun, you know, you build up five keys, you open five chests, it's cool, because um, it feels like you've just spent 450 gems, but without actually having the price of it. So there you go, guys, hope you enjoyed, thanks very much for watching, and I guess I will see you next time for uh, probably the stat cap video, I am very, very close, I'll see you then.